I've got a new antenna. A lot of you would know the antennas that I currently have here at the, uh, well, I guess it's sort of the new QTH. I've been here for a little while now. I've got the DX Commander here in the backyard. I've also got the Diamond V2000, which is up the mast, which is a vertical antenna for 270 and 6. Now, the DX Commander also tunes up on 6, but it sort of, it sort of doesn't cut the mustard when it comes to really pulling in the DX of stations a long way away. I mean, it works well. It works well for what I would term local. When it comes to wanting to work uh, long distance stuff, such as the US on FT8, which I've really, really wanted to do. I've got a goal. I've got a goal to work the US on, well, first of all on FT8 on six meters, but then also to work them on uh, SSB as well. But anyway, that's a long-term goal. So I started to notice, uh, or probably about a month back, that uh, there was some signals coming in from the US and they were being heard by ZL and VK on six meters. So I kind of got a bit, uh, got, a, got a bit restless. So what I did was, ooh, <laughs> I, just, I just tripped over that, that peg. Dear, oh dear, I forgot it was there. So uh, I got a little bit restless because I thought I can't miss out on all of the DX opportunities. So I borrowed this antenna. This is a five element YU7EF Yagi antenna. And I've borrowed this from Richard, VK7ZBX. You would have seen Richard before on a, another video that we've done. I think we did the review on the, uh, we did a review on a dual band two and 70 centimeter antenna from um, antennas amplifiers. So Richard's a good guy. He, um, he, he's, he loves building antennas just like I do as well. And this is his little portable one that he uses for field days. And uh, he said, oh, you can take it and you can use it and set it up. So yeah, just a five element. It's not that long and it's also very, very lightweight. It's using a 25 millimeter square boxing for the boom and it's using 10 millimeter tubing for the elements and it has Pertec clamps, uh, which are like um, hydraulic hose clamps used for mounting the elements up on top. And you probably can't quite see here, but they are color coded. I'll put a photo in anyway of, of the color coding. So when it's a portable antenna, it's really, really easy to put it together because you just literally put each element into each colored clamp. And it's a split dipole, just a small little uh, coil or ugly ballon, open coax ballon, whatever you want to call it. And uh, that is semi-permanently pointing towards the US. And I've just got the Armstrong rotation method here so I can just loosen off these hose clamps. There's one there at the top and one here at the bottom and just using a star picket in the ground. So it's pretty crude, but it works. We'll just So the cable here is just a bit of RG58. Um, we have here in Australia called cell foil, which is slightly lower loss than regular RG58. And then it goes into some 213 um, back into the shack. I think within about two days of putting it up, I did hear two US stations on FT8 on six meters from the United States of America. And uh, they ended up calling me. It was a little bit early here in the morning um, when it happened. And they ended up calling me on uh, directly because they saw my spot on PSK Reporter and I had um, sent them an email and I said, hey, uh, I saw that you, you saw me on PSK Reporter. Anyway, they replied and said, yeah, we, we saw VK7 and we really wanted to work you. So um, just sort of shows the, how good PSK Reporter and um, these spotting programs are and also ham alert and things like that. So, but this morning been working a couple of ZLs, uh, worked them on six meters. They were quite strong signals. So. Here at the moment, we're in the start of January, or sort of, well, we're getting towards mid-January now. So uh, six metres uh, will start to quieten down a little bit with sporadic E, which it does over the summer period, uh, towards the, the middle and towards the back end of summer, it starts to quieten down. But there's still heaps of propagation opportunities to possibly the US, Hawaii and other station, uh, other places. So if you have six meters and you have a decent, uh, or you want a decent antenna, build something like this. I'll put a link in the description below to the antenna. And um, yeah, build build something like this, chuck it up, and uh, you never know, you might be able to, to work uh, VK. I've only got 100 watts, so 
I'm probably going to struggle a little bit, but you know, never say never with Solar Cycle 25 on the way up. So one of the things I like about antenna building is that you can model the antenna in a program called MMANA, and then you can sort of get a bit of an indication of how well it's going to perform. You can tweak certain things as well, uh, certain measurements and designs of the antenna, and it gives you a pretty cool vid, uh, visual indication of what the radiation pattern is going to be, how high above the ground and all those sort of things. So um, I'm just going to have a look at that five element Yagi now and just show you some of the things that, or well, see how it's performing here. I think it's about three meters, it's three meters off the ground. It's not very high at all. And uh, I'll also show you an article that I uh, did on my website where I built a six element version of the same antenna. So here is MMANA, and this is the five element, the YU7EF EF0605C antenna, which is the one that is designed uh, outside. And as you can see here, you can pan around and have a look and double click on elements and change the lengths and all those sort of things. But if we go to calculate at 50.1, this antenna is calculated here. I've got a real ground. I've added some height, about three meters above the ground using some aluminium pipe, a R of 51 and a X of 13.5, so an SWR of 1.3 to 1. Uh, it says here that I'm going to get about 13.43 dBi of gain and a front to back ratio of 22.84, and you can go to a far field plot now this uh, plot here is looking down on the antenna. So if the antenna is here in the middle, this is the direction. And uh, you can hold down on the mouse and you can get a bit of an idea of the 3dB beam width. So if I just scroll here, you can see here G max minus GA is 2.9. So about 3dB, that angle is minus 27. And if we go to plus 27, there we go, we can see 2.9, so about 3 dB there. So that's about 54 degrees. So add those two numbers, so 27 plus uh, 27, yeah, 54. Uh, 54 degree 3 dB beam width, so not too bad. So it means that I can cover the United States, beaming at the United States, I can also cover a bit of New Zealand. Um, I can't quite cover VK, but the good thing is, is that they're fairly close enough that it uh, it works relatively well for local contacts anyway. Uh, this plot here is an interesting one though. This is looking, if you were looking side on to the antenna, so we're standing at ground level and we're looking side onto it, uh, the elevation uh, pattern. So the main beam is about there, which has got an elevation angle of 25 degrees. So that's pretty high. Um, ideally for DX, you want to make sure that you get that as low as possible. Now, I can do that if I add a bit of extra height. So say if I got this antenna up to six meters, which is a wavelength above the ground on that band, and then we go back. You can see here now there's two big lobes, but the main lobe here is now down to 14 degrees. It's not too bad. Um, it's, you know, it would be good to, to get a little bit higher, but anyway... I'm running it three meters above the ground, so uh, that's the best that I can do, and it, and it works. I mean, uh, the I heard the US guys, so you know it uh, it's working pretty well. Um, some other cool things while I've got MMA and A open, and I recommend that you have a look at DX Commander. Have a look at his YouTube channel because Callum does an awful lot of videos on MMA and A. Uh, if you have a look here, you can get a 3D plot. So uh, here's the antenna on the X and Y axis. Um, and obviously it's uh, yeah, it's Yagi antenna, so it's directional in on the X axis. So you can see here what it looks like. So if we were standing there at ground level looking at the antenna, that's the radiation pattern that we would see uh, off of the antenna. So not much out the back. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's a cool thing that you can do. You can also zoom uh, up in on it and move it in and around and sort of have a bit of a have a bit of a play around. You can also do plots, so you can do SWR impedance gain and far field plots uh, over a specified bandwidth. So let's go to uh, SWR. So we've got a uh, let's have a one 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 megahertz bandwidth here, so fifty point six megahertz down to forty nine point six megahertz. If we click detailed, we get a nice 
SWR curve. So the lowest SWR is saying here that it's about 50.35 for our design um, impedance here. We get on the left-hand side resistance and on the right-hand side we get reactance. We want reactance to be as close to zero as possible and resistance to be as close to 50 ohms as possible. So uh, there's a bit of bit of a, uh, an interesting curve here. Reactance sort of almost looks like it's going to zero and then starts to pan off and resistance starts to increase. So that's okay. And uh, far field plots. So this, these are interesting because you can see what the antenna is doing at various different frequencies. So you can see at 49.6, there's quite a, the front to back ratio, there's quite a big lobe out the back. By the time you get to 50.1, that's uh, starting to get smaller. 50.35, even smaller again, and 50.6, even smaller again, but we probably lost a bit of gain. No, we've gained, gained 0.1 of a dB. So, yeah, pretty interesting program. Now, on my website, hamradiodx.net, I've done quite a few antenna articles. You can go here to categories and click on antennas. I did some write-ups on some of the builds that I've done. Um, basically, that antenna that I showed you uh, before, the five-element Yagi from Richard, uh, I've built a six element Yagi of the same um, version, so YU7EF, uh, it's an EF0606. And uh, basically I just go through here and just show you again the elevation plots. Um, I'll show you how I've built the antenna uh, step by step using these clamps, um, the fixings that I used. Um, I go on about the split dipole and also the coaxial ballon that I, that I made. Um, and also just just the and then here we go here's the SWR and the return loss plots as well so and a couple of cool photos so yeah check that out um, it is handy I've also done quite a few different interesting technical articles related to antennas as far as uh, this YU7EF antenna and a G0KSC LFA Yagi which is the antenna of choice that I like to use on six meters now my six element Yagi that I is currently down at the moment is an LFA antenna and uh, it's rather rather interesting reading. So yeah, check out my antenna category on Ham Radio DX. I love building and experimenting with antennas. If you feel the same as me, then see me over at these videos over here. Please give Yoshi a thumbs up and also hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this content and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. I don't know if I should add that Yoshi part. He's like my little mascot now.